a novena to the Blessed Virgin Mary, following the writings of St. Louis de Montfort. The Sixth Day A Continuation of the Secret of the Rosary by St. Louis de Montfort The Third Decade Continued The Twenty-Ninth Rose there is nothing more divine, according to the mind of St. Denis, nothing more noble or agreeable to God, than to cooperate in the work of saving souls and to frustrate the devil's plans for ruining them. The Son of God came down to earth for no other reason than to save us. He upset Satan's empire by founding the church, but the devil rallied his strength and wreaked cruel violence on souls by the Albigensian heresy, by the hatred, dissensions and abominable vices which he spread throughout the world in the 11th century. Only severe remedies could possibly cure such terrible disorders and repel Satan's forces. The Blessed Virgin, protectress of the Church, has given us a most powerful means for appeasing her son's anger, uprooting heresy and reforming Christian morals in the confraternity of the Holy Rosary, as events have shown. It has brought back charity and the frequent reception of the sacraments, as in the first golden centuries of the Church, and it has reformed Christian morals. Pope Leo X said in his bull that this confraternity had been founded in honour of God and of the Blessed Virgin, as a wall to hold back the evils that were going to break upon the Church. Gregory XIII said that the Rosary was given us from heaven as a means of appeasing God's anger and of imploring the intercession of Our Lady. Julius III said that the Rosary was inspired by God that heaven might be more easily open to us through the favours of Our Lady. Paul III and Blessed Pius V declared that the Rosary was given to the faithful in order that they might have spiritual peace and consolation more easily. Surely everyone will want to join a confraternity which was founded for such noble purposes. Father Dominic, a Carthusian, who was deeply devoted to the Holy Rosary, had a vision in which he saw heaven opened and the whole heavenly court assembled in magnificent array. He heard them sing the rosary on an enchanting melody, and each decade was in honour of a mystery of the life, passion or glory of Jesus Christ and his Holy Mother. Father Dominic noticed that whenever they pronounced the holy name of Mary, they bowed their heads, and at the name of Jesus they genuflected and gave thanks to God for the great good he had wrought in heaven and on earth through the Holy Rosary. He also saw Our Lady and the Saints present to God the rosaries which the confraternity members say here on earth. He noticed too that they were praying for those who practiced this devotion. He also saw beautiful crowns without number, which were made of sweet-smelling flowers, for those who say the rosary devoutly. He learned that by every rosary that they say, they make a crown for themselves, which they will be able to wear in heaven. This holy Carthusian's vision is very much like that which the beloved disciple had, in which he saw a great multitude of angels and saints, who continually praised and blessed Jesus Christ for all that he had done and suffered on earth for our salvation. And is not this what the devout members of the Rosary Confraternity do? It must not be imagined that the Rosary is only for women and for simple and unlearned people. It is also for men and for the greatest of men. As soon as Saint Dominic acquainted Pope Innocent III with the fact that he had received a command from heaven to establish the Confraternity of the Holy Rosary, the Holy Father gave it his full approval, urged St. Dominic to preach it, 
and said that he wished to become a member himself. Even cardinals embraced the devotion with great fervour, which prompted Lopez to say, Neither sex nor age nor any other condition has kept anyone from devotion to the rosary. Members of this confraternity have come from all walks of life, dukes, princes, kings, as well as prelates, cardinals and sovereign pontiffs. It would take too long to list them in this little book. If you join this confraternity, you will share in their devotion and their graces on earth and their glory in heaven. Since you are united to them in their devotion, you will share in their dignity. The Thirtieth Rose If privileges, graces and indulgences of a confraternity make it valuable to us, then that of the Rosary is the one to be most recommended, since it, since it is the most favoured and enriched with indulgences. And ever since its inception, there has hardly been a Pope who has not opened the treasures of the Church to enrich it with further privileges. And since example is more persuasive than words and favours, the Holy Fathers have found that there was no better way to show their high regard for this Holy Confraternity than to join it themselves. Here is a short summary of the indulgences which they wholeheartedly granted to the confraternity of the Holy Rosary, and which were confirmed again by our Holy Father, Pope Innocent XI, on the 31st of July 1679, and received and made public by the Archbishop of Paris on the 25th of September of the same year. Members may gain a plenary indulgence on the day of joining the confraternity, a plenary indulgence at the hour of death. For each rosary of five decades recited, ten years and ten quarantines. Each time that members say the holy names of Jesus and Mary devoutly, seven days indulgence. For those who assist with devotion at the procession of the Holy Rosary, seven years and seven quarantines of indulgence. Members who have made a good confession and are genuinely sorry for their sins may gain a plenary indulgence on certain days by visiting the Rosary Chapel in the church where the confraternity is established. This may be gained on the first Sunday of every month and on the feasts of our Lord and Our Lady. To those who assist at the Salve Regina, a hundred days indulgence. To those who openly wear the rosary out of devotion and to set a good example, a hundred days indulgence. Sick members who are unable to go to the church may gain a plenary indulgence by going to confession and communion and by saying that day the whole rosary, or at least five decades. The Sovereign Pontiffs have shown their generosity towards members of the Rosary Confraternity by allowing them to gain the indulgences attached to the Stations of the Cross, by visiting five altars in the Church where the Rosary Confraternity is established and by saying the Our Father and Hail Mary five times before each altar for the well-being of the Church. If, uh, if there are only one or two altars in the Confraternity Church, they should say the Our Father and Hail Mary twenty-five times before one of them. The Fourth Decade the surpassing merit of the Holy Rosary as seen in the wonders God has worked through it. The 31st Rose The saintly Blanche of Castile, Queen of France, was deeply grieved because twelve years after her marriage she was still childless. 
When St. Dominic went to see her, he advised her to say the rosary every day, to ask God for the grace of motherhood, and she faithfully carried out his advice. In the year 1213, she gave birth to her eldest child, who was called Philip. But when the child died in infancy, the Queen sought Our Lady's help more than ever, and had a large number of rosaries given out to all the members of the court and to people in several towns in the kingdom, asking them to pray to God for a blessing, which this time would be complete. This was granted to her, for in 1215, St. Louis was born, the prince who was to become the glory of France and the model of Christian kings. Alphonsus VIII, King of Aragon and Castile, had been leading a disorderly life and had been punished by God in several ways and he was forced to take refuge in a town belonging to one of his allies. St. Dominic happened to be in this town on Christmas Day, and he preached on the rosary, as he usually did, and spoke of the graces that we obtain through this devotion. He mentioned, among other things, that those who said the rosary devoutly would overcome their enemies and regain all that they had lost. The king listened attentively and sent for St. Dominic to ask whether what he had said about the rosary was really true. The saint assured him that nothing was more true and that if only he would practice this devotion and join the confraternity, he would see for himself. The king resolved to say the rosary every day and persevered for a year in doing so. The very next Christmas, Our Lady appeared to him at the end of his rosary and said, Alphonsus, you have served me for a year by saying my rosary devoutly every day, so I have come to reward you. I have obtained the forgiveness of your sins from my son. Here is a rosary which I present to you. Wear it, and I promise you, that none of your enemies will be able to harm you. Our Lady vanished, leaving the king overjoyed and greatly encouraged. He immediately went in search of the queen and told her all about Our Lady's gift and the promise that went with it. He touched her eyes with this rosary, for she had lost her sight, and she was cured. Shortly afterwards, the king rallied some troops and with the help of his allies, boldly attacked his enemies. He forced them to give back the territory they had taken from him and make reparation for his losses. They were completely routed, and he became so successful in war that soldiers came from all sides to fight under his standard, because it seemed that whenever he went into battle, the victory was sure to be his. This is not surprising because he never went into battle without first saying his rosary on his knees. He made certain that the whole of his court joined the confraternity of the rosary and he saw to it that all his officials and servants were devoted to it. The queen also joined the confraternity and they both persevered in the service of the Blessed Virgin and lived very holy lives. The Thirty-Second Rose Saint Dominic had a cousin named Don Perez, or Pedro, who was leading a highly immoral life. When he heard that his cousin was preaching on the wonders of the Rosary, and learned that several people had been converted and had amended their lives by means of it, he said, I had given up all hope of being saved but now I am beginning to take heart again. I really must hear this man of God. So one day he went to hear one of St. Dominic's sermons. When the latter caught sight of him, he struck out against sin more zealously than ever before. And from the depths of his heart, he besought God to enlighten his cousin 
and let him see what a deplorable state his soul was in. At first, Don Perez was somewhat alarmed, but he still did not resolve to change his ways. He came once more to hear the saint preach, and his cousin, realising that a heart as hardened as his could only be moved by something extraordinary, cried out with a loud voice, Lord Jesus, grant that this whole congregation may see the state of the man who has just come into your house. Then everyone suddenly saw that Don Perez was completely surrounded by a band of devils in the form of hideous beasts, who were holding him in great iron chains. People fled in all directions in abject terror, and Don Perez himself was even more appalled when he saw how everyone shunned him. Saint Dominic said, Them all to stand still, and said to his cousin, Unhappy man that you are, acknowledge the deplorable state you are in, and throw yourself at Our Lady's feet. Take this rosary, say it with devotion and with true sorrow for all your sins, and make a resolution to amend your life. Don Perez knelt down and said the rosary. He then felt the desire to make his confession which he did with heartfelt contrition. St. Dominic ordered him to say the rosary every day. He promised to do this, and he entered his own name in the register of the confraternity. When he left the church, his face was no longer horrible to behold, but shining like that of an angel. Thereafter he persevered in devotion to the rosary, led a well-ordered life, and died a happy death. The Thirty-Third Rose When St. Dominic was preaching the rosary near Carcassonne, an Albigensian was brought to him who was possessed by the devil. The saint exorcised him in the presence of a great crowd of people. It appears that over twelve thousand had come to hear him speak. The devils who were in possession of this wretched man were forced to answer St. Dominic's questions in spite of themselves. They said that there were 15,000 of them in the body of that poor man because he had attacked the 15 mysteries of the rosary. That by the rosary which he preached, he put fear and horror into the depths of hell and that the that he was the man that they hated most throughout the world because of the souls he snatched from them by the devotion of the rosary. Saint Dominic put his rosary round the neck of the possessed man and asked them who, of all the saints in heaven, was the one that they feared the most, who should therefore be the most loved and revered by men. At this they let out such unearthly screams that most of the people fell to the ground, seized with fear. Then, using all their cunning so as not to answer, the devils wept and wailed in such a pitiful way that many of the people wept also out of pure natural pity. The devils, speaking through the mouth of the Albigensian, pleaded in a heart-rending voice, Dominic, Dominic, have pity on us. We promise you, we will never harm you. You have always had compassion for sinners and those in distress. Have pity on us, for we are in grievous straits. We are suffering so much already. Why do you delight in increasing our pains? Can't you be satisfied with the pains we now endure? Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Saint Dominic was not in the least mood by the pathetic words of those wretched spirits, and told them he would not let them alone until they had answered his question. Then they said they would whisper the answer in such a way that only St. Dominic would be able to hear. The latter firmly insisted upon, upon their answering clearly and audibly. Then the devils kept quiet and would not say another word, completely disregarding St. Dominic's orders. 
So he knelt down and said this prayer to Our Lady. O most glorious Virgin Mary, I implore you, by the power of the Holy Rosary, command these enemies of the human race to answer my question. No sooner had he said this prayer than a glowing flame leapt out of the ears, nostrils and mouth of the possessed man. Everyone shook with fear, but the fire did not hurt anyone. Then the devils cried, Dominic, we beseech you, by the passion of Jesus Christ and the merits of his Holy Mother and of all the saints, let us leave the body of this man without speaking further. For the angels will answer your question whenever you wish. After all, are we not liars? So why should you want to believe us? Do not torment us any more. Have pity on us. Woe to you, wretched spirits, who do not deserve to be heard, St. Dominic said. And kneeling down, he prayed to the Blessed Virgin, O most worthy Mother of Wisdom, I am praying for the people assembled here who have already learned how to say the angelic salutation properly. I beg you, for the salvation of those here present, compel these adversaries of yours to proclaim the whole truth here and now before the people. St. Dominic had scarcely finished this prayer when he saw the Blessed Virgin near at hand, surrounded by a multitude of angels. She struck the possessed man with a golden rod which she held, and said, Answer my servant Dominic at once. It must be noted that the people neither saw nor heard Our Lady, only St. Dominic. Then the devil started screaming, O oh, you who are enemy, our downfall and our destruction, why have you come from heaven to torture us so grievously? O oh, advocate of sinners, you who snatch them from the very jaws of hell, you who are a most sure path to heaven, must we, in spite of ourselves, tell the whole truth and confess before everyone who it is who is the cause of our shame and our ruin? O oh, woe to us, princes of darkness! Then listen, you Christians, this mother of Jesus is most powerful in saving her servants from falling into hell. She is like the sun which destroys the darkness of our wiles and subtlety. It is she who uncovers our hidden plots, breaks our snares and makes our temptations useless and ineffective. We have to say, however, reluctantly, that no soul who has really persevered in her service has ever been damned with us. One single sigh that she offers to the Blessed Trinity is worth far more than all the prayers, desires and aspirations of all the saints. We fear her more than all the other saints in heaven together, and we have no success with her faithful servants. Many Christians who call on her at the hour of death, and who really ought to be damned according to our ordinary standards, are saved by her intercession. And if that Marietta it is thus in the fury they called her, did not counter our plans and our efforts, we should have overcome the church and destroyed it long before this, and caused all the orders in the church to fall into error and infidelity. Now that we are forced to speak, we must also tell you that nobody who perseveres in saying the rosary will be damned, because she obtains for her servants the grace of true contrition for their sins, by which they obtain pardon and mercy. Then St. Dominic had all the people say the rosary very slowly and with great devotion, and a wonderful thing happened. At each Hail Mary, which he and the people said, a large number of devils issued forth from the wretched man's body under the guise of red-hot coals. When the devils had all been expelled and the heretic completely delivered from them, Our Lady, although invisible, gave her blessing to the assembled company, and they were filled with joy. 
a large number of heretics were converted because of this miracle and joined the confraternity of the Holy Rosary. Today, we will pray five or fifteen decades of the Holy Rosary to ask your graces from the Mother of Grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of the Rosary, pray for us. Saint Louis de Montfort, pray for us. Saint Dominic, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.